Hi, I'm over here. I'm Alma. Welcome to this week's art vlog. My beautiful daughter-in-law recently gave me a very high compliment. She said she wishes that she could live in one of my sketchbook pages. Isn't that just the best? So she inspired me to create this week's introduction where with the help of a little green screen and some video editing magic, I am sorta of, kind of positioned inside my artwork sitting in this chair. It's not perfect, but I have been talking over the last couple weeks about stretching ourselves creatively. And so I thought I needed to follow my own advice. So this week I'm talking a little bit about the child within. And I think it's really important to me to follow, you know, what, what that child inside wants to create. And it's always in the spirit of fun and lots of color and trying new things. So I hope that it inspires you to listen to the little one inside of you. And now without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. I'm using four warm colors and one cool color, which is the smalt blue, and black and white. And I'm running low on whites, so I'm heading to the art store today. And I'm beginning the sketch with my Posca acrylic paint pen in light blue and you can watch this video here if you enjoy this type of process where I begin with the Posca pen. Also I want to mention I have this other video where I talk about the warm and cool colors and how using them in combination I think creates an appealing painting. Before I dive into this week's topic, I want to share the initial drawing that I did for this idea, which I made in Procreate on my iPad. In my mind's eye, I saw a little girl in a sewing machine with a room with a lot of stuff that she loves in the background, but I really had to make sense of it before I painted it. And I'm glad I did because in Pinterest, I, the images I really loved had two rooms and I thought that this perspective would add depth to my flat style of painting. So I decided to use naive art as a framework to describe this artwork and the series that I have in mind, mainly for ease of description and I just love the name. And also it helps set the tone for what I want to say. So just really quickly, historically, naive art is made by self-taught artists, which I am, and it is childlike, and it's colorfully bold, and generally has a happy feeling. It can have a folk art quality too, although I don't think my art does. Naive art refers to paintings, and obviously this is a sketchbook illustration, but I was excited to share it with you before I actually make a painting on a canvas. So technically I'm using the term loosely, but I love the word because it's as defined as innocent, because this is what this idea feels like to me, and I'm gonna do my best to describe the inspiration and story behind it. When I first began as an artist, I was super inspired and I got tons of ideas, kind of like there was something inside me saying, finally, you finally have given me a chance to make art. The very first thing I made was a fiber art quilt of a landscape and it was the drawing I always made as a child of mountains and a river. And it didn't really hit me until when I finished it and I was walking by this picture window we had in our house that I noticed that the view was the same as the picture. I lived in Bend, Oregon with views of the Cascades at that time. I felt like my child self knew that one day we'd find each other again and this is interesting to me because as a child I always lived in urban areas but the pictures in my heart were of mountains and trees. So within a short time, I was inspired to make paintings of a little girl on a tire swing, which is reminiscent of my own tire swing under an oak tree. And there were also artworks where I was in a forest and there were paintings where she told of what was meaningful to her, the child in me, you know, the things that I loved. And all was well, and I was having outward success at that time as an artist. I can look back on that time and see that my inner child was happy because I was painting what made her heart sing. And then I stopped listening, and like many of us do actually, and I thought that I needed to make art that needed to look a certain way, and I remember a man who made a comment about my art, and he was being kind, he said, wow, it looks like you're having a lot of fun. 
And I didn't like the comment because it felt to me like my art wasn't serious enough. And it's fine because that's where I was and that's okay and I'm not putting myself down about that. I went down lots of roads making art that I thought was sellable and making art that was like other people's art and and all of it is is totally okay. It's all part of the creative journey. I think we try things in the hope of finding our way to success. That's normal. Some things work and a lot of things just don't. The point is that or at least the point I want to make is that success or no success we are exactly right as we are in spite of the trying and the doing and the failing and we can be proud of ourselves for keeping keeping on on the creative path so this brings me to the child within and i think that we are meant to connect with the little person inside of us i think that they hold the key to our deep joy and our complete acceptance of ourselves i think that she's showing up in my art again because i've made efforts to reach her and i'm not saying that you need to make art of a child character to have joy what i'm saying is that our creativity can be a gateway to understanding this part of ourselves that we are meant to connect with there are so many opportunities in life to honor every part of ourselves and especially on the creative path i'd like to share ways that have helped me to connect with the child in me in the hopes that it will help you too so being proud of myself is a big one and how i got here was by looking at pictures of myself as a little girl and telling her i love her and you know if you don't have a photo of yourself you can imagine you know photos of yourself and i'm proud of her and the things that she makes treating myself like i'm my own friend and stop putting myself and my art down especially when you know, people are saying nice things. It hurts the little girl in me when I put myself down. So I try my best to accept compliments and I stop arguing against myself when people like my art. And this has helped a lot. So what I know the child in me needs most of all is to feel safe and loved and cherished and to listen to her and how, and how that translates is to listen to how I'm feeling all the time. So one thing I do to practice is I look in the mirror and I say, I love you. And I love who I see back in that mirror, no matter what, no matter how I look or how I feel, you know, it's where I am. So I know that I'm tuned in when I feel relaxed and happy and present and I look forward to the day, which is how I feel a lot of the time, most of the time these days, and I'm super grateful for that. I really love how the little girl in this artwork is leaning towards all the versions of herself that she'll grow up to be. And I feel once again, like we're finding each other again in the art and it feels really good. It feels like I'm on the right path, which I'm just so grateful to be where I am. Maybe you're in tune with your child heart. And if you are, I am so happy for you. It is the best. And if you struggle, like I often have throughout the creative journey, then there are things that you can do today to help yourself and, you know, make the art experience um, work for you and get you to that place of joy. Ask yourself, you know, what what does the child in you get excited about and how can you honor this little person in you? Even if you have very little time and resources, we all have inclinations toward beauty, however we define it. A walk in nature can work wonders. Even making a list of things that we find beautiful can launch some doodles that can connect us with our own innocence. I'll be painting an old Polaroid camera soon because I had one as a child and it's one of my ideas that I have and I just loved it. And I invite you to do the same. Maybe you loved Polaroids too, or maybe you had a favorite toy like 
in this illustration my tiny sewing machine that I used to love to make you know I, I don't ever think I made doll clothes but I sewed fabric together and that made me happy so maybe you can doodle your toy or paint it just for fun it's not easy being innocent and free as an adult because life can be pretty ruthless and very convincing that it's all struggle but I think as artists, we can lighten life's load, you know? I think artists often get a reputation for not being very grounded in reality, but maybe that is by design, you know, to balance the realists and the realities of life. Wearing rose-colored glasses isn't denying suffering that exists in the world. It's actually choosing to see and create and appreciate beauty in the world in spite of its problems and its darkness. And this is the energy that very, very young children bring to life. And I think that we can bring it to life at any age. It just takes a little bit of introspection and honoring you know, that part of us. Another way to honor the child within is to share our art. And most children are excited to share what they make. And I think there's that desire in most of us, but as adults, we can be afraid of being judged. So I wanted to share a group that I joined on Instagram called Room Portrait Club. The creator, artist, and author, S.J. Axelby, she posts a photo of a styled room by an interior designer. And for the purposes of the group you're welcome to create art inspired by that room by that photo so i've done a few and they're super great fun really challenging and very fun practice i've done it with painting and also with digital art and it's a great um, platform to share your work especially if you know you're feeling a little bit hesitant there are all kinds of ranges of abilities and ranges of experience. So check that out if you love rooms like I do. So I hope you all have a wonderful week. I'm so grateful that you're here. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I welcome questions about art and I hope you all have a wonderful week. Happy creating everyone.